So, hey guys, welcome back. This is Shane Ames for Unique Arts, and today I have a very special guest. He looks a little bit like me. Uh, this is my brother Liam, and yeah, he's my twin brother actually. So I guess I should say that too. And I mean, we're both nerds. I'm more into the art stuff, but he is really big on Tolkien. Tolkien. How do you say it? <laughs> Uh, Tolkien, technically, but Tolkien, regardless. Technically, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so today we're going to look a little bit into his art. So Tolkien, as most of you, Tolkien, whatever, you, you, you get the gist. Um, Tolkien, <laughs> he, most of us know him from The Hobbit and like The Lord of the Rings and stuff, and he obviously did some other things. But something that I think is interesting is that for lots of those illustrations that you might see on some of the older covers of The Hobbit prints, I guess even some of the newer ones too, that he made them himself. Like he actually painted and he drew. And lots of his stuff is, well, pretty much all of it, I guess you could say is representational art. It's not like hyper-realism. I was talking to my brother and I think that it's, it kind of looks more kind of like textile textures. Like his texturing is odd to me, but at the same time, he has like a good atmosphere, like atmosphere perspective with the, lots of his sittings but the characters themselves almost feel like more medieval. Like they kind of just float there almost, like a more medieval style. But I think that they're really interesting. There's actually a book that I will put in the link and I'll also send the link to lots of his artworks as well in the description so you guys can look at them. But the ones I think that are the most interesting, uh, but at the same time, I don't really understand them. I don't know like the, I guess the symbols that are going with him and with him is that those heraldic devices and you know about some of them, like the Finn Golfin, all those elf dudes or whatever, but <laughs> I don't know what, like you know more about the characters themselves. So maybe if you looked at them, you could understand maybe what they're, what they're trying to get at, but yeah. Yeah, most of them are uh, characters, at least for the heraldic the devices are mostly from the Silmarillion. Um, and they're almost all exclusively for elves. Uh, there's a couple for humans, but they're generally for the houses. Right, it'll be like oh, the okay. House of Hador and House of Haleth. Those are the human ones. Um, besides that, it kind of makes sense, I guess, that the elves would have their own herald devices because they, they're immortal. Um, and so it makes sense to have your own device to, or emblem to signify who is who, basically, since you're gonna live forever, so. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, when they say like the emblem, is it almost like a flag essentially? Like would they have flags maybe at their home or something? Or do they, what is, is it just something they maybe put on their dress? Or is it just something that goes on their stamp of seal if they send a letter or what? Like, do you... Um, you know, as far as I'm aware, it could be all of the above. I would imagine banners at least. Um, I, I It's been a little while since I've read The Fall of Gondolin. Um, but you'll if you ever do read um, even in the film, really, when it talks about Gondolin, um, there's people of different houses. I mean, and it, it always mentions that. I mean, so you got like Ecthelion of the Fountain, for example, he's a pretty famous one. And the assumption is that he's from a house that has a symbol on it that is assumably a fountain. And maybe it's because there was a big fountain. He actually dies in this fountain, spoiler alert. Um, but <laughs> assumably that fountain is what his house is named after. Maybe, the, you know, maybe it's the other way around, but so. But that's, I mean, that's one way to recognize, you know, like Delion in his house. Now, I'm not sure if he was in charge, like if he was the head of the house or not. Again, elves are immortals. So maybe he was the only one that was of the fountain for all we know. So. Okay. Well, I definitely think that they're interesting and I think they're worth taking a look at. I mean, if you do understand lots of this Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth lore stuff, you might get more out of it. I'm kind of a newbie when it comes to it. Like I've read The Hobbit and I've seen all the movies. <laughs> like that's pretty much it. Um, and I do enjoy it. I just haven't taken the time to like get more into it. Although I wouldn't mind to do more someday. But I think that one thing that's definitely interesting about Tolkien is although he it was a great writer and a great world builder. Like he even bothered to dabble in art. And I think that is something that's worthwhile. Even like, okay, I guess I filmed the video above these before. I painted these and they're not very impressive. The thing is like, obviously I don't paint, but it's still fun to paint. And I think that it's um, kind of help be more well-rounded, even if like you're a scholar, even if you do most of your time writing like literature or something, you can, I think painting is a nice um, complimentary um, form of art for it. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think um, 
if you do, if any of you are like fans of Middle Earth, um, if you do look at his painting beyond the, her the heraldic devices are almost all from Silmarillion, but besides that, he's got a few paintings of places from Silmarillion like Gondolin, um, Nargothron, and of the sort, and one of Glaurun as well. Um, but for the most part, they're all from The Hobbit. Uh, like, there's a couple I can think of that are from Lord of the Rings specifically. He's got a couple of Orthanc, actually. Um, like, maybe thoughts, like, designs he was running with, because they don't look anything alike. Um, but, I mean, even if you have, like, this is an illustrated version of The Hobbit, right? And you can get a, quite a few different illustrated versions, but this one's actually illustrated by Tolkien himself, so it has his art in it. Um, and as far as, you know, I mean, for me, I, that's that what I wanted the most was his art, not someone else's art for The Hobbit, um, because this is how he viewed it. And a lot of these, not a lot actually, because he's written, he illustrated what, probably over a hundred pieces of art. Um, I think there's about 200 or so. Okay, so. Uh, a good amount, right? I mean, most of it has to deal with his writing. And um, there's a French museum, I think in like Aubusson or something like that, that is turning a little over 10 of them into tapestries. Um, there is a cool interview I watched at one point actually that they interviewed Christopher Tolkien. This is when he was alive, of course, so it was probably a couple years ago. Um, and uh, interviews in French, but there are, you can read the, they do translate it into the closed captions. Um, and it's, it was, he actually tells a really cool story of when his father was, I believe it was the Rivendell painting, uh, when his father was staying up really late and like painting it and whatnot and how Christopher was um, really young. I think he's the youngest of his children, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head. And um, he went downstairs and was like crying to his dad because he missed him, I guess. I'm not really sure it was really late at night. And I don't understand, I mean, children or children, I suppose. And uh, he just, it's a really sweet story of how he, he goes to up to his father and his father, and he cries on his father's painting. He like gets a tear, like right on a tree in the foreground. And uh, it, he says how his dad didn't get mad at all and just fixed it, just blended it all in. Um, really sweet story. I always I like listening to that. Um, yeah, it was unfortunate. I watched it like the first time, like right, like the day before. I think Christopher Tolkien died, but, uh, which oh. made me a lot sadder <laughs> afterwards. So okay, well, thanks for sharing, dude. But I'm um, gonna be able to send that to you. <laughs> oh yeah, like like put a link. Do you have a link for it? Is there a link for it? Um, the video is on YouTube, and the, there's a, the tapestry thing. There's definitely a, a Tolkien Society uh, article about okay. it. So, okay. So we'll have all those links in the description if you're interested in checking those out. But yeah, just let us know uh, if all the art pieces that we've shown across the screen, if there's a, one that you enjoy the most, or if you have any questions or anything. But just listen, let us know, and uh, please feel free to like and subscribe. And see you guys next time.